Dr. Mary Tally Bowden is back. We are going to talk about how she just won a lawsuit against the FDA. And this is the famous tweet that got so much attention, in large part because so many media organizations loved this. They just loved this tweet. You are not a horse. You are not a cow. Seriously, y'all, stop it. I mean, back when I originally covered this, Dr. Bowden, I did give props to the intern who wrote this or whoever it was, <laughs> because it really, it really was creative and it did do what it was meant to do, which it got the media's attention because it was just oversimplified and incorrect enough for the media to run wild with it because they just thought it was hilarious. There's a doctor with a horse. They're saying, y'all, that's so cute. And it, it, it did what it was intended to do. It got a lot of attention. Highly embarrassing for them to have to take these down, they to take that down and all the other posts that related to it. They had to take down a page on their website, which directly states that patients should not take ivermectin for COVID. So and there's no monetary, but we're, we're setting a precedent. We're putting them back in their lane, um, telling the world that, you know, reminding the world that the FDA is not a doctor. It's not your doctor. It's the government. They're there to approve medications and move on. Showing this story from the Hill, this is titled "One in Twenty Used Ivermectin Hydroxychloroquine in Nineteen Research," um, which I don't, I don't know the I don't know the merits of the study, but essentially what the article says is that there are a lot of people that were using it, and frankly, that in large part means they were prescribed this medicine. And yet at the same time, you see headlines too, which even the Hill, I mean, they, they, they disparage it, but this is the worst result of what the FDA and others did in that messaging, which is in America, the business of lies is winning and killing people. And it connects it to being far right. Now, all of a sudden you take a drug and you're an extremist it has everything to do with your political views you're an idiot you're a conspiracy theorist yeah the media is they loved it they parroted it joe they went, went after joe rogan shortly after the fda uh sent out that tweet uh it's it's really sad um and we've never seen anything like it with any other medication telerx it's one of the medical freedom pharmacies that has arisen over the last couple of years they uh they purport themselves to be one of the main pharmacies to cut the red tape between hospital bureaucracy, uh, government pressure, censorship, and all that. Um, and between you and your, you can get an EpiPen like I did there for half the price of what my local pharmacy wanted. And you can use promo code uh, Allison for 20% off. Um, PlayRx is really a direct to consumer pharmacy. Um, you click drug is used for, they send it over to the doctor. You'll get it in a couple of days. Telerx, T-E-L-Y-R-X.com, 20% off with promo code Allison. And um, like I said, I had to get an EpiPen because now all of a sudden Florida is trying to kill me. I was able to get it in a couple of days. So thanks to them for that. And it was a lot cheaper. I actually left it at my pharmacy counter originally here because they wanted $500. The FDA has to do stuff in response to your lawsuit, but like all these media articles are still out there. I mean, do you feel like the damage is already done or do you think that do you think that at least you're like, well, we got something positive out of it? Um, because it's just the history written online about this is like this, the, this headline is all over the place and it's not going anywhere. And we have three years of propaganda to reverse. Uh, so it's not, yeah, the damage has been done and thankful to you and other independent journalists are willing to keep covering this and talking about COVID and keep it in the news so that, People don't forget because we have three years of propaganda to reverse. And this court decision helps us, but the, the war is not over. Mm -hmm. Okay. At alisonmar.locals.com, you can join my editorial board for five bucks a month. Go one-on-one -on -one with most censored people on the internet. I think it's a very good value if you hate my guests or actually hate me and my questions. This is a great way for you to intervene. You can be in the driver's seat, ask whatever you want. Also, don't forget if you don't like credit cards, or you've got a winning lottery ticket, or loose pocket change, or actually thank you to, I'm going to say, here we go, um, Francine. Thank you to Francine for the Dunkin' Donuts card that you just sent me in the mail. Totally can go get some caffeine, which I probably need with two young kids. Send me whatever, just nothing edible and nothing creepy.
no letters that you're going to murder me with magazine letter cutouts, nothing that I can eat because I won't eat it because I'll think you put anthrax in it. You're trying to kill me. P.O. Box 3355, Danelle in Florida, 34432. Okay, at allisonmorrow.locals.com, Brisbane asks, was it just fear of loss of a job law that the FDA knows best why the majority of physicians fell in line with the FDA and who the heck, it wasn't just the FDA. It was all these doctors that went along with it. Was it just fear of job loss or do you think they're true believers in what the FDA was saying? Well, yeah, there's always this resistance to be seen as an alternative. You immediately get cast as a quack like I did if you don't go along with the mainstream. There were definitely many cases, not just in your profession, but all over the place of examples being made of people to set that kind of precedent. I'm curious what you think about the vaccine and emergency youth authorization and, and what we saw with ivermectin, like MSLSM asks on locals, was it because of the emergency use for the vaccine that they were so anti-ivermectin? Definitely. There, and I have a little timeline on my sub stack um, showing how all the dates line up. It was an orchestrated attack. It was to try to combat vaccine hesitancy. Uh, if you look at the dates, it, it, it's hard for me to say off the top of my head, but it all started in March 2021. That's when the FDA originally posted this web, this web page about not taking ivermectin for COVID. And shortly thereafter, they dumped about $11 billion into vaccine PR or propaganda. Is where you can follow Dr. Bowden. She's on Twitter at BreatheMD and is always a fun follow. You'll get lots of information every day from her. Um, I think that's all I've got, unless there's anything else you'd like to add. We'll see if the media picks up on your story. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Let's get it. Any, what, what's next for you? Oh, uh, well, the medical board, I'm dealing with that still. That's end of April. Yeah. And then I'm trying to get those shots pulled off the market. I don't know if you saw, I started a nonprofit called AmericansForHealthFreedom.org. And we have politicians who are speaking up about the shots and calling for them to be pulled off the market. Okay, I'll look that up and we'll show it. Uh, AmericansForHealthFreedom.org. Okay. Is this it? Yes. Okay. Okay. 